Now once we have understood the procedure that how do we find out a minimal cover out of the given empty set, let's quickly apply that in the example over here. Uh, so we have a relation R with three attributes ABC. The functional dependency set is given right here. One, two, three, four FDs are there. And we have to find its minimal cover. So let's do one by one. The very first step, remember, we have to apply all the steps in an order. One, two, three. Never ever change the order of the steps. Okay, the rules have to be applied in an order. And the very first one says that you have to singlet on the RHS part. So whichever functional dependencies have multiple attributes in the RHS, we have to decompose them. So the very first step, the first dependency, which is A to B, C, will be decomposed as A to B, comma, A to C. The next is as it is, there is no decomposition needed. Again, there is no decomposition needed. And here again, there is no decomposition possible at the RHS side side okay now uh, at this level i can easily see and reduce that a to b and a to b they are exactly same so i would just ignore them okay i would just count at them at once so now let's come to the second step second step says that we have to take out the extraneous attributes that means the redundant attribute from the lhs part all the lhs up till here are single attribute so there is nothing extra of course we need at least one attribute in the x part otherwise who will determine who right but here we have two attributes and we have to check whether for determining c do we need both a and b together or they can be i mean any one of them can be eliminated so for that matter we have to check the power of both the attributes that is a and b and the power of attributes in relation schema in, in functional dependency is nothing but then what they can determine in their power. Okay. So like whatever is possible for them to determine in any way, trivially, non-trivially, applying all the inference rules will become the power. So let's check the A closure. The A closure from here, A determines itself certainly. From A to B, A also determines B. From A to C, A also determines C. So A ultimately determines all the three attributes. Let's check the power of B. From here, B determines itself. B also determines C. Does B determine A? No. B does not determine A. And from here, I can clearly say that A is determining the value of B. And if A is determining the value of B here, what is the point of writing B here, right? I mean, it's, it's as good as A because B, I mean, by just looking at this, I can say that A is a strong attribute and B is weak attribute in this combination because B is dependent on A. And with that conclusion, we can remove the value of B from here. And the final set becomes A to B after step 2 okay this is after step 2 a to b a to c then is b to c and this last is a to c i'm not rewriting a to c because it's already here okay so here it becomes a to c the next step is very easy step number three we have to check which of them are redundant the idea of checking for the redundancy is very simple. If I take off this dependency from the set, does it lose any meaning? Does it lose any implication? This is exactly what I have to check. And for that matter, again, you, you see, uh, all these concepts very much makes use of closure of an attribute. So you remember the class of closure of an attribute we had studied and we we got to know the power of an attribute and how well we can use it everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is one by one I will take each functional dependency and I will try to check its implication without it being the part of it. So I'm doing is what? I'm hiding this functional dependency. Assume we don't have A to B but with the remaining dependencies we have to imply A to B. Okay. So how do we get to know that 
does A imply B by finding out the closure of A. Now you have to find out the closure of A by not considering it, only by considering these two. So with that what do you find? We find from here A and we also find C. Do we find B? We don't find B. B. If we don't find B that means this is essential. You cannot remove it because if we remove it, its implication is lost. By any way, A can determine B is not possible in the leftover set. Okay, And with that idea, we got to know that this is essential for us. This is essential. It has to be included. So in the final set, I am making the inclusion of A to B. Now let's check for the second functional dependency in the similar fashion that I assume it is not present. Okay, Now I will try to imply A to C. Can we find it out? Let's take A plus again with the help of this FD and with the help of this FD. And it comes out to be A, A to B, B to C, A, B, C. So I don't have this, still I can imply A to C. That means it is redundant, it is not essential, it is not needed. We can definitely remove it from the final set. And once you find out for any FD, it can be removed. That means it is immediately removed. We do not, we need not to keep it for the further checking also. Just remove it. Okay. Now let's check for the third one that is B to C. So forget that B is present and let's try to find out the B plus. And let's try to find out the B plus. If we assume that it is not there, the set has only one FD and that is A to B and B plus gives us nothing but then only B. Okay, because there is no FD deriving from, derived from B. And in that case, we are losing the meaning of B to C. And if we are losing the meaning of B to C, that means it is essential to be included. And so, it becomes B to C. And the final FD set becomes A to B and B to C. And this is your minimal cover. Alright, so we started from this functional dependency set and we have reduced up to here. Now you can easily say we, we had 1, 2, 3, 4 and that too with multiple attributes on each side and now we just have 2 with single single attributes at each side. Now can you find out your, uh, your uh, like the, the concept I had given at the beginning of the lecture that whenever an update has to be performed how easier it is to check for the violations and how tough it was there to check for the violations, isn't it? I mean, there is definitely a lot of task reduced when it comes to checking for these two and when it comes to checking for all these. Now, once you have understood the concept of minimal cover, you have understood the need, why do we need it? And you have also got it completely with an example I have shown you that how we have to find out a minimal cover with a number of steps okay at this point of time I want you to pause the video and solve this question by yourself okay I mean again it's very small a relation RB, R, A, B, C with the three attributes and a small FD set with the only three FDs are given to you and you have to find out and come up with a minimal cover pause it solve it and then come back for the solution okay so now as you are coming back, I am assuming you are coming back from the solution. Let's check whether the solution that you have got and the solution I am going to give are going to be same or not. So let's check it. The very first step which is singleton the RHS. And we don't have any RHS, we have multiple attributes. So it remains as it is. We don't have to do it, right? We have as it is set over here. Now the step number two which says check for the LHS. So we have one functional dependency and multiple attributes are A and B. And we have understood that we have to do nothing but then check for the closure of both A and B to check which of them is strong attribute and which of them is weak attribute or which of them is essential attribute and which of them is extra or extraneous attribute. So let's find out the A plus. The A plus says it determines A, B, and it determines C, A, B, C. B plus C is B determines B, B also determines A, and B A determines C. Oh, A determines B, and B determines A, and both of them have the same power. None of them is weak here. What should we do now? 
which of them should be included which of them should be excluded both of them have the power of determining each other and both of them have the power of determining the value of c also here so in this case what we do okay here comes a unique point about minimal cover and note point make a note right here in your notes that a minimal cover need not to be unique you can have multiple minimal covers from a similar functional dependency set which are not unique which are not similar okay and most likely in this case we are going to get more than one minimal cover and how just let's check out because i find that both a and b are at the same power so i can make this by saying either a to c or i can also say b to c so i can select a so it becomes case number one when i am selecting a let's select a in that case the functional dependency becomes a to c the next are a to b the next is b to a okay now for this i am applying the step number 3 let's check whether a to c is redundant or not i remove it and find out the a closure a closure says a b does it say c from anywhere no that means a to c has to be included now let's remove this and try to find out the closure a closure will say a c but not b so that means this is also essential now similarly let's remove this and find out its closure b plus c is only b not b to a so it is also essential so this is your minimal cover when you are taking a you are selecting a okay now the case number 2 from here let's select b in that case after step number 2 your fd will become b to c a to b and b to a now let's apply the step number 3 again over this set right if i remove this b plus a is only b a so it has to be included if i remove this a plus c is only a so it has to be included if i remove this b plus c is only b c so it has to be included now right here in front of you you have two set after the step number 3 and so this one becomes minimal cover number 1 and this becomes minimal cover number 2 minimal cover set 1 minimal cover set Two and this is how we can find two minimal covers for the similar functional dependency set. I hope now this is very much clear that how do we find out the minimal cover for a given FD set and what is the need for having a minimal cover and exactly what is the application for the equivalence of a functional dependency set. When you have got your minimal cover and you have your F the original FD set, you can find out. that they cover each other or not do they logically imply the same thing or not by checking their equivalence okay so i hope so far everything is clear i'll see you very soon in the next video with the previous year gate questions based on the minimal cover till then stay tuned and please do share the video with your friends bye bye